Welcome back to some new r slash malicious compliance stories, where people comply to the letter, but not the spirit of our request. I hope you had a great day. Thanks for all the likes and comments on the last video. And now let's start with the first story. It's called Send them immediately. I've rocked my way up the ladder at the company where I work, but when I started, I was a support agent. By the time this happened, I was a team lead of some kind. I still work directly supporting customers, but I also had a fair amount of agency. I didn't have to ask for permission or assistance to do anything related to my job. We are a software company, but we used to sell a specific small Bluetooth accessory that worked with one of our apps. It came in several bright colors and we sold multi-packs. It was the kind of device you might need more than one of and it was a popular gift. One year during the Christmas season, our manufacturer messed up gloriously. They didn't deliver all of the inventory we were supposed to get. And worse, much of what we did get was messed up and had serious defects. It was a horrible mess and a serious detriment to our small company. I was on the front lines of cleaning it up. We wound up severely back ordered at the busiest time of year, having sold units that should have been delivered, but that we either never received or found to be defective upon arrival. We had to contact people and let them know their orders would be delayed until after the holidays. Some people wanted refunds, some people wanted their items late. We tried to be helpful and bent over backwards to be apologetic while trying to keep this debacle from becoming a catastrophe and incentivize people not to cancel. There was one man who wanted us to perform magic however. He wanted his order, our largest multi-pack, and he wanted it now. I don't know how many times he contacted us, but I wound up being the only one to deal with him because he'd always be escalated to me. I told him over and over again that we couldn't send his order, even though we very much wanted to, so we'd be happy to refund him. If he wanted to wait, there were many others ahead of him to get their orders. He demanded that he get his order first. He didn't care who else had to wait. He would berate me and try to literally command me to do as he said, almost daily for a while, no matter how many times I explained why I literally couldn't. Eventually, I opened the spreadsheet where we were keeping our back orders and moved him to the very bottom. Yeah, I was prolonging my own suffering, but he had me feeling petty. After the holidays ended and upper management waged destruction with our manufacturer, usable stock started rolling in. I bumped a few deserving or eager customers to the top of the list, but mostly sent them out in order. He's the only one I bumped down but I had something ready for the next time he decided to scream at me. When he inevitably did, I told him we had stock, but others were receiving theirs first and we hadn't yet gotten in the colors he ordered in his multi-pack. I was sort of planning to do what I did anyway, but he was kind enough to give me explicit permission. I don't care what colors you send, you are to send them to me immediately. Our colors included Suzanne G. Comb and Pink. The customer was gloriously smug and condescending when I told him we'd go ahead and fulfill his order right away. He definitely thought he had won some kind of victory. But sure enough, the day his package arrived, he sent an email complaining. I know I said I'd accept any color, but really, you sent me, a man, an order of nothing but pink? I want these replaced. Send me something else. I told him that's all we had available for him and that the conversation was over. And so it was. I never heard from him again. It took a few years before I brought it up, but I've told that anecdote at workplace meetings a few times, including to my boss, the CEO. I wouldn't take another support job ever, but this was worth the misery. Always be nice to support agents, for your own sake. The next story is called, She Tried to Negotiate. The software development company I used to internet uses a sheet to estimate the cost of building a certain software or update for a client. This sheet includes employees working on the project, how long they estimate it will take, things like that. After an intern goes around the departments collecting this info from the various employees, we then calculate the cost and send it to the client to accept or reject. Since our company is so popular in the area, 
We have a pretty long query sometimes, so if you reject the estimate, chances are you might have to wait in the queue all over again to request a new one. The day was slow and they mostly had me man the phones and go on coffee once. Typical intern stuff. Then a client calls in saying she wants a piece of clock-in software for her employees so she can more accurately track their work hours. By this point into my internship, I had done at least four to five of these sheets and I was taught by my supervisor how to identify which departments would be needed for which projects. So after gathering the details from the client, I hang up and translate the needs for the employees. Essentially explain it in programmer jargon. Half an hour later, I'm done with the sheet and check the calculations three times. So I emailed it to the client. Not even two minutes later, I got a estimate rejected message on the company smartphone I was given. She added a reply stating, this estimate is non-compliable with me. So I respond with, we are sorry to hear that ma'am. Please enjoy the rest of your day. And then I went about my business. Roughly an hour later, she emails the phone again, asking, is that all you have to say? By this point, I realized what she was trying to do and reported to my supervisor that Miss Karen was trying to haggle the price. My supervisor calls Karen's phone and asks if she would like to have the estimate we sent to her so she can accept. Karen outright tells her she wants a cheaper price, to which my supervisor tells her the price is non-negotiable and to take it as is. So Karen uses her signature move of, let me speak with your manager. But my supervisor simply informed her that she'd get the same response and just hung up on her. Karen eventually did call back and even showed up to the building to renegotiate the price, but was denied. But she was able to get a meeting with the manager to file a complaint for poor customer service and unprofessional behavior. My supervisor and I were called in and asked for our side of the exchange. We just gave them the chat log and proved that she rejected the estimate initially sent to her. She had no color in her face after those came out and couldn't even look at him. She was given a place on our blacklist and recommended other companies. The last story is called Not Leaving Without It. Five years ago, I used to work for a large electronics store in Scandinavia. We sold everything from TVs to dishwashers. Being a physical store, we had a lot of display items and often sold them at a lower price. When the product was discontinued, we rarely had the original packaging or manuals lying around. It was a late afternoon, about 30 minutes before closing. I worked the shift in the computer department and was asked to help at the camera section of the store as I was the go-to person for cameras. I was greeted by a couple who I would guess were in their late 50s. They were looking at one of the display models. I walked them through the camera specs, let them test it out and explained that while we had all the necessary accessories, the original manual and packaging were thrown away. They seemed perfectly fine with this, especially after I offered them a fantastical deal on the camera. We headed to the checkout where they paid and everything seemed to be going smoothly. That is, until the husband turned to me and asked, where's the manual? I was thinking, maybe I didn't explain it well enough. I started to explain again, reiterating that we didn't have the original manual, but that it was easily accessible online. I had even included a link to the manual on their receipt. This was not taken well by the husband, who started raising his voice at me and said, online? I bought this product and I want the manual physically so I can read through it at home, which I do understand, and tried explaining that I normally would print the manual. However, the manual for this particular camera was about 650 pages. They both were more than capable of looking up the manual, as I saw them browsing the web looking at reviews for the camera. The husband angrily started to berate me for about 5 minutes about how this wasn't a way to run a business and how he wouldn't leave without it. I tried explaining that the manual was 650 pages, how long that would take to print and that we were closing in around 10 minutes. But he was having none of it and he wouldn't leave without it. I am normally a kind and respectful person and would do everything to fix a problem. But he was being disrespectful and I was paid by the hour anyway. So with my best customer service voice, I told him, 
Sorry sir, of course the customer is always right and started printing the 650 pages while the husband looked smugly at me, probably feeling like he had won over the big man. But the thing was, the printers we had at the sales desk were only meant for printing receipts, so they couldn't print double sided. And though they were relatively fast, they were not 650 pages fast and only had around 300 sheets of paper at a time. As the minutes ticked by, with each sheet of paper that emerged from the printer, the man's smug expression disappeared. His wife, who had initially seemed passive, began to look annoyed and a bit embarrassed. Then the printer ran out of paper and you could see the relief in their eyes as they thought the printer was finally done. But that was quickly gone when they saw me coming with a huge stack of paper to fill it up. 20 minutes and 400 pages in, the wife started to look even more desperate, realizing that they were the only customers in a store that closed 10 minutes ago. The husband was beginning to realize his mistake and nervously began to ask when it was done printing. I just smiled with my best customer service smile. We are about two thirds of the way. He sighed and just continued to look at the mountain of paper. It slowly got bigger and bigger. Another refill and 200 pages later, the husband's defeat was evident. He finally asked if he could just take what had already been printed and leave. But by then, only like 50 pages remained. So I told him, we are almost done and that I would hate it if he left without the last pages in case he would miss something important. When the printer finally stopped, I handed him the entire 650 page manual, still smiling and said, here you go, I hope you have a great day and enjoy the camera. They quickly left the store, silent and defeated and I never saw them again. Thanks for watching the video to the end, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please don't forget to leave a like, comment and subscribe. And if you have time, watch another one of my videos. Also, if you want to support me further, check out the channel membership or Patreon. And now I hope you have a great day. See you soon. Bye bye.